Right, hello everyone. We hope you guys are all well. I hope everybody had a really good festive season and a great new year. And it's really good to be back with all of you today. And how have you been, mate? I've been great. Been yeah. great. Been looking forward to getting back and seeing our wonderful friends. Here. Exactly. One week away and we've already lost you. <laughs> I mean, like we missed you. Sorry, not lost you. We missed you. Okay, so it's spirituality for you. <laughs> all right, so today we're going to carry on from lesson number four. As usual, if you have any questions, please put them forward and what we're going to do is answer them as best we can. Now today we have a special lesson because we're going to talk about, although we mentioned it here and there and now and then, we're going to bring a few things together in this lesson. So it's very important. Um, it's very important for us to um, start to build the foundations that we have learned so far and kind of like bring these jigsaw puzzles together so we can use them effectively in the, par uh, in the path on the path and actually understand also um, what we're going through okay because spiritual development is um, a lot of emotional um, sensations coming up all the time and the important thing that we need to do is on top of that emotional um, emotional roller coaster or emotional waves that we're going through we need to put an understanding as to how things happen why things happen why they need to happen in such a way and what can we really do about it because a lot of the problems that we have in life including all the problems that people um, you know generally on the outside suffer from like depression um, you know like disturbances stress um, all kinds of things is because we're going through a lot of emotional things and we don't really understand why we're going through them so we need to start now in this semester start bringing things together so we can work on it so, all right so this is the topic of our lesson today now in the past we've learned that we are a desire to receive pleasure and that's great that's how it was meant to be because the creator wants to give us pleasure so he created us in a way that we can want to receive pleasure. And we discussed before that our problem is that we're using our desire to receive in an egoistic way. Uh, and that is actually stealing from everybody else in order to fulfill me. And that's causing a big societal pro problem globally because if I have to take from Anthony in order to fill myself up, then he's going to end up with a minus. And then because I'm with an over plus and he's in a minus, he's then going to look at me and he's going to want some of that plus back. So we're going to have to argue about it. And this is the general problem of humanity. We're going through a lot of dramas and problems together because our relationships to each other are in an egoistic way. But it was also meant to be that way because in the perception of reality, we learned that we can only perceive things in a correct way if we have two complete opposite points. So the Creator created us as a desire to receive in an egoistic way so that we can discover what this nature of ours really is. And from that discovery, we can also build the opposite side to that reality, and that is called the Creator. And that's what we intend to do. In order to do that, we need a few things, as you are well aware. For us to build ourselves in spirituality, we need an environment that consists of a guide, the correct sources. Let's just do this properly. And friends along the way that study with us. And that's called an environment. Okay, so that's that's our environment. There we go. And those are that's what we need. So we're going to as a person who comes to study with this dot in the heart, what we need to do is then make use of the environment and what we're learning and studying together in order to build something called spirituality. And that spirituality is built on three lines. the left line, oops, let's do this a little thinner, let's 
make it. This is the left line. This is the right line. So as you can see, in reality, we already have two opposites. And from those two opposites, we need to build ourselves. Now, the left line is our egoistic nature. That's our egoistic nature. And the right line is the creator's attribute of bestowal. All right, I'm just going to write it in short, but you need to know that that's an attribute. All right, and we're stuck down here in no man's land. All right, but fortunately, we have the dot in the heart with us. And all of this space here is spiritual. And all we have in our lives is an inclination for spirituality which is called the dot in the heart inclination for spirituality okay but um that's all there is to it and how we're going to build spirituality depends on how we use the environment now because we we only have a small desire for spirituality what we really need to do is make a huge desire out of it just like the creator wants to fulfill in order for us to do that we have to first get our definitions back on track spirituality in terms of kabbalah means the attribute of love and bestowal now that sounds quite nice when somebody's talking about it but come to do it well that's completely against our nature all right so this is love bestowal and love and our nature is ego and reception all right and because we're in an egoistic reception um, format trying to come to love and bestow which is completely opposite is just like you know it's, it's it's rather it's rather hard because we can't even imagine what love is in our world we don't know right love did i describe love before chocolate love right did i did i define it before did i say yeah you guys know what love in our world is right if i if i have a good taste from our relationship i say i love you but if tomorrow if you do something to upset me and i don't love you anymore okay this is love in our world and in spirituality that's not called love now, that's called like you know egoistic egocentric way of using people so we have to come to an understanding about what love is and what bestowal is and it's completely just like out of our radar we don't know we've never felt it before was so so in this world when it comes to love and bestowal we're just you know in no man's land however fortunately for us there is something the Kabbalists call the creator isn't that lovely okay so that is the creator now the creator created everything the whole of reality and we're in that reality and he wants to bestow he is love and bestowal and the Kabbalists say listen if you've got a dot in the heart and you really really want to attain the meaning of life and you work towards that the creator has this amazing tendency to help you out However, for him to help you out, you've got to do a few things correctly, okay? Because just like we, when we want help from our parents, we have to do, you know, we have to be a good boy or a good girl. We've got to be a good kid. So the parents say, oh, that's nice. Let's help you out to get better. And this is exactly how it works with the Creator, regardless of the fact that we might be in our 30s, 40s and 50s and we might not feel like a kid at all. However, in the eyes of the Creator, we are just like little babies. Okay, running around, jumping up and down and so forth. 
simply because just like a baby in this world doesn't understand this reality we want to be spiritual but we don't understand what spiritual reality is so according to the definition of not being able to grasp understand and know what to do in a certain environment according to that definition we are called babies and that's how the creator sees us, sees us. so when we try to do something right he helps us out and as you know from previous lessons his help to us is called the light okay the light now for us to attract this light it's also called understanding you could say it's like um, increasing your awareness um, increasing your consciousness increasing your sensitivity to understanding the things you're going through so when we're talking about light it's nothing you know airy fairy it's about the the understanding or in fact it might not be the understanding but it might be a lot of feelings that you're going through so you're obviously going through some changes and all the changes are happening because you want to go through this change and the creator is helping us out for us to all do that we need to have others around us and they're called friends why is this so important because I'm nagging on about it quite often is for one thing we're all in one reality and we're all stuck together so if I want to come to the creator's attributes of bestowing and loving others I need to what I need to do if I want to be a champion I need to practice don't I so who am I going to practice with I don't see the creator he's nowhere around and it's a good thing that he's nowhere around because if I did see the creator I'd stick on to him I'd hold him really tight never let him go and I would never ever leave my egoism I would be like a puppy or a little kitten stuck to its owner knowing that I will get fed today however the creator doesn't want us to be like our cats and dogs he wants us to be independent he wants us to grow up he wants us to be like him so as a wise if you were a wise person and if you were really really rich and you had kids how would you do how would you raise them you'd never tell them you were rich would you okay if you were rich and you had children you wouldn't tell them you're rich it's not because you're stingy and you don't want to spend money on them no because if you if they know that you're all very rich then they won't do anything will they all right they won't do anything and in fact by nature it's not their fault but because our desire to receive pleasure works in this way they will wait until you die and so they can have everything because kids feel that whatever their parents own is their property it's felt like that in nature so the creator doesn't want to show us himself he doesn't want to show us what he wants to give us and he definitely does not want us to um, kind of like stick to him and suck his blood so he's keeping himself away but Kabbalists who've attained this state are explaining to us that listen to attain the Creator and to attain his level what we need to do is change our nature and in order for us to change our nature we have to practice on it because practice becomes a habit and then habit can become a second nature and then we can begin to feel things inside of us changing and our attitude will start to change towards life and as our attitude starts to change towards life what we will see and feel is the creator acting behind the whole of reality and we'll be able to in fact participate in reality with him because we will be behaving and acting just like him so in order for us to practice we need to have other dots in the heart and luckily if you're a student of Kabbalah somehow you end up studying in a Kabbalah group and hopefully you'll end up in a right group because 
you know, with the kind of stuff that's on the internet lately, there's some weird Kabbalah practices out there. So you want to make sure you choose the right kind of teacher, the right kind of sources, and the right kind of friends, because environment is everything. You know, you've got people doing Kabbalistic yoga to Kabbalistic psychology to Kabbalistic you whatever, okay? But we know that the authentic wisdom of Kabbalah talks about just one thing, how I can attain the purpose of life, which is to reveal the Creator while living in this world. Okay, so it's not red, red strings, it's not holy water, it's not doing weird yoga poses according to the Hebrew alphabet or anything like that. It's straightforward attaining the Creator while we're living here. And to attain the Creator means to attain His attributes. So, I have to, thus henceforth, practice on the friends. All right. However, one cannot tango alone. So what do we have to do? Well, we all have to practice, which brings us to everyone practicing with each other how to be in bestowal. There we go. So everybody is in practice mode. Now, this creates a mutual connection between us. However, as you know, before we attain the Creator, although we're practicing this with the guidance of the guide and the books that we have, we're going to go through a lot of mind-boggling stuff. And this could be corporeal events in our life. It could be emotional things that we were going through and we don't know why and we don't know what they are and so on. So we need to learn how to work together in the group so that by working together we can actually see our real nature. Oops, sorry about that. We can actually begin to see our real nature and we can also begin to, by practicing the nature of the Creator in the group, start to build something called an independent person, independent from the Creator, right in between the two attributes. And that's called the middle line. And that's actually called human or Adam or man. When I say man, obviously, you know, man, woman, right? We're talking about a human, right? So it's, there's no genders here. And that's where we are because we are, because our egoistic nature is not something we created. The Creator gave that to us. So we can't really say it's the real me. Because if the Creator made me that way, it's not like, you know, it's, it's not like me. And the bestowal and the attribute of love is the Creator, so that's Him, so that's not me either. So what we have to do in order to be independent as spiritual beings who understand the Creator completely, need to first come to an understanding of what I am as an individual, what my nature really is. And I can only begin to understand that by applying the study with the rest of the friends. Now, because life has many tricks up its sleeve, we might go through some good days, we might go through some bad days, and so on. Life has its ups and downs. But it's exactly supposed to be like that. Why? Because in order for us to apply bestowal and love and taking care of each other, instead of taking care of ourselves like we always do, what we need to do is we need to go through some waves, like ups and downs. And we need to do it all together. Because if we do it all together, just like in a family that's tight-knit 
and strong. When a family has a problem or a drama, if they're tight, they can overcome anything. So the Creator also wants us to be tight-knit in order for us to build this attribute of love and bestow, this connection between us. All right. The Creator also wants us to be tightly knit. So in order for us to be tightly knit, we need to study together and we need to go through states in our spiritual growth and no matter what we go through, we need to stick it out together. Now that thing, that attribute of, well that state or condition of sticking everything out together, like hanging on, hanging on to each other, is called Arvut. So that's one new, this is a new principle, right? Did I mention Arvut before? I don't recall mentioning Arvut before. No. It's called Arvut. Now Arvut means mutual responsibility. It means that if I'm going to be advancing in spirituality, and if I want to attain this attribute that the Creator has, I need to feel like everybody depends on me. It's like the head of the family, right? You know when you like the father or the mother, you feel responsible for the family, okay? And the group, as we all study together, need to build this Arvut, mutual responsibility together. Mutual responsibility means that I am responsible for the spiritual development of all my friends. So we have to work towards each other in a way like it will make me really, really feel like I'm responsible for them, even though I don't even know them, right? So we look on the screen. If you guys see each other on the screen, not a lot of people have cameras on today. What's going on? Where's everybody's camera? Okay, give it, let's give each other a wave. Feel all happy and nice. All right, great. So we're entering 2018. Okay, so everybody looks very positive and optimistic. Okay, great. So what we need to do, right, is even though we don't know each other from scratch, it's especially like that. We're all going to get together. We don't know each other. But from the state of not knowing each other, being completely random and not being connected to each other at all, we're going to build amongst us a state where we feel responsible for each other okay and that state is called arvut and how we're we going to attain that well we're going to attain that during the period of studying okay well, obviously just like little kids can't be responsible just like that in the family it's going to take us a little bit of time to discover what this responsibility is all about but this is one concept we need to have in our dictionary because it's very important if we don't have arvut we can't attain spirituality arvut is also the condition in the biblical story where the people of israel came out of egypt and they were at the bottom of mount sinai and they promised each other that they will be responsible for each other it's that promise they made and only after they made that promise to each other that they were able to receive spirituality. They were able to understand the Creator, to connect with the Creator. Because being responsible for, for others in spirituality means that I'm outside of myself. I want to be outside of myself. And I want to ensure that I'm out of my egoism. So when we're talking about love and bestowal, I don't want your minds going into any airy, fairy, Hollywood romantic movie. Right? When we're talking about love and bestowal, what we're talking about is an attribute which actually allows me to come out of my skin, to come out of my egoistic nature, so I can feel the Creator. The way they define it as love and bestowal is because that's how they feel the Creator's relationship towards themselves. The Kabbalists I'm talking about. That's how they feel the Creator. It's like 
there's somebody out there that really loves me and cares about me and is doing everything for me. And that's how they feel the Creator when they get out of their egoism. So when we're talking about bestowal love, we need to be really careful that we don't draw that nice elevated definition into the swamp of our world. Right? Because our love in this world is just I love me and that's it. Alright? So that's that. That's our word. So we're going to read a little bit. Okay? And we're going to read from Rabash's articles. And the name of the article is The Agenda of the Assembly, number two. Now I'm just going to read a few excerpts from this. Okay? It's in the Rabash Social Writings. You can find it in this book. If you don't have one, it's good to have it. Alright? Just it's good reading. It's great reading if you're, you know, just chilling out on the couch or wherever. Um, because that book really talks about how we need to build our relationships so that we can really start to make that inner change. Alright, so let's read a little bit and then we shall move forward. In the meantime, you can also send questions. And that, that's from the book, Rabash the Social Writing, is that correct? That's correct. All right, we just had a question about that. So that's right, Rabash Social Writings. Okay, you'll find it in our website, kabbalahbooks.info, I think. Yeah, kabbalahbooks.info. Mm -hmm. So if you go to kabbalahbooks.info, you can also find that book there. They do deliveries all over. Let us read the agenda of the assembly number two. Article number 17 from 1985-86. In Masechet Brachot, page 32, our sages wrote, Rabbi Shamlai said, one should always praise the Creator and then pray. From where do we have that? From Moses, as it is written, and I pleaded. Baha Sulam interpreted that when one wishes to ask for a favor from another, he must know a if he has what he asks of him because if he doesn't there's no point in asking and b that he has a kind heart this is so because he may, he may have what he asks but not the kind of heart that would give hence first one needs to praise the creator meaning believe that the creator has everything that one is asking for and that the creator is merciful and grants everyone his wish for the best. Now, although we don't feel that at the moment, the Kabbalists are saying this is like an assumption we need to take at the moment. Right? Because we don't feel that. Any, anyone pray to the Creator often? Hands up. Come on. Yeah, everybody does. If you have a desire for something in your heart, right? It might be for anything. Chocolate, tea, coffee, doesn't matter. The minute you have a desire in your heart, it means you're praying. Okay? Not in religious terms, but it, because your heart desires. So it's like a prayer. Okay? So we're not talking about praying like the religious do. That doesn't work. It's never been, it hasn't been working for thousands of years. However, though, every time you want something, that's a prayer. And sometimes we, we might want something and we may feel like the Creator is not answering our prayer. Anybody feel that? Yeah, okay, so we want something and the Creator is not, it's like the Creator is not giving it to us. Okay, if you're getting everything you want, you're probably, you're probably in the wrong place studying the wrong thing. Because <laughs> normally, normally people who come to Kabbalah are just like they want something and they never get it. So they want, they're wondering what the meaning of life is. Okay, but however, there are times when we don't get what we want from the Creator. But the Kabbalists are saying, listen, although it might be like that, we should keep at the back of our minds that the Creator wants to, and He's, he's hearing every prayer, and He wants to answer every prayer. Okay? Let's just assume that for the moment, because for a Kabbalist who has attained His nature, if the Creator is bestowing and loving, the automatic assumption would be that He would accept our prayer. Right? So it's logical. So, the reason he's giving us an explanation is that because we don't see it that way in our life. So let's just make an assumption and that's the case. It turns out 
that when the friends gather in one place, the assembly is certainly for a purpose, since when one allocates part of his time, which he would use for his own needs, relinquishing his engagements and partaking in an assembly, he wishes to acquire something. So that's like us, isn't it? It's Tuesday night, and normally Tuesday night is Tuesday night in Australia is tight pocket night because cinemas are half price. But we're not going to the movies, even though it's Tuesday night. Okay, so what we're doing is studying Kabbalah. So we gave up on a few things tonight to come together and all of us to be here. And we should know why we're here, right? We should always prepare before the lesson so we begin to feel and understand what we're doing tonight with all these people from all around Europe and Africa. And we have no clue who they are, because that's weird, all right? However, thus it is important to try that when each of the friends goes home, he should see that he came to the assembly with and what he has acquired and now that he's going home. So after the lesson, we should all think about what we got from the lesson. I came here, I spent some time, I invested some effort with people who have got no idea who they are even, okay? And what did I take from this? So we should make uh, a calculation. Sometimes during the assembly of friends, everyone feels good during the meeting. At that time, it does not occur to them to contemplate with which possession they will go home. Meaning, what I have in my hand, which I acquired at the assembly of friends, and did not have before I came to the society. And that he sees that he has nothing. So during our lesson, and whenever we come together, we should actually remember what we're taking from the lesson or what we're taking from our gathering. The reason for that is sometimes, you know, when we feel good, our mind like stops. Okay, we feel so good, it's like, it's like bliss. I don't want to think about anything, I don't want to do anything. It's like great feeling. And that feeling can actually be negative, even though on the outside it sounds great. But a lot of the times when we feel really great, it, it kind of dims us down, it, it shuts us down because we're not as sharp as before that sensation. So Baal Salaam here in his Rabashi in the article is saying, listen, even though you might be having a really great time with the friends, you should still keep at the back of your mind what I'm doing with these people, what's the purpose, what's my intention? Now, we shouldn't lose the purpose of our gathering. This is similar to what is written, when you come into your friend's wine yard, you may eat grapes until you have saturated your soul, but do not put any in your vessels. We should interpret it that when the friends gather, it is called your friend's wine yard. When you sit and eat and drink together, talking about this and that, and the body enjoys during the action. This is similar to, you may eat grapes until you, sat, you have saturated your soul. But when you go home and wish to see what you have in your vessels to take some livelihood home, when we leave the gathering and wish to examine what we have in our vessels, after all the partying, we see that, but do not put any in your vessels. In other words, there is nothing in the vessels with which to revive the soul after the assembly. So after the lesson, let's say, let's say at the lesson we had a good time. Is everyone having a good time? Yeah, I'm really trying hard to give you guys a good show. Trust me. <laughs> and it's not easy every week. I can really understand as TV personalities. All right. However, though, sometimes when we leave, right, we get stuck in like, oh, what did I do that for? So during the assembly, it's important for us to think about our mission, our goal, right? And that's to attain the Creator. And that shouldn't really leave our thoughts and our minds and our sight, even though I'm having a good time with the friends. All right. The, the reason for that is only children or mindless people do things without a reason. 
and when we feel really saturated and good in our vessels we sometimes forget why we're doing it because the pleasure overtakes the consciousness so the Kabbalists are saying you can have a great time just keep in mind why you're doing it so you have the sensation and the reason behind all the things that you're doing and that's called the intention intention in short means why I'm here why am I doing it all right therefore first one must praise the importance of the gathering and then see that to acquire from the, and then see what to acquire from that activity it is as our sages said one should always praise the creator and then pray in other words the beginning of the assembly meaning the beginning of the discussions which is the beginning of the assembly should be about praising the society now praising the society may sound like well what is that what's praising the society each of us okay each of us should praise the society that's what he's saying should praise the society the group that is right we should praise the group <clears throat> this is an action we should do i'm going to explain why we need to do that okay but we should just take from the ex from the article that everyone in the group should praise the group should praise the friends there's a very good reason why we need to do that which we will come to in other words the beginning of the assembly meaning the beginning of the discussions which is the beginning of the assembly should be about praising the society each and every one must try to provide reasons and explanations for their merit and importance they should speak of nothing but the praise of society so when we all together let's say we all met for five o'clock tea on a Sunday afternoon at somebody somebody's place we should be talking about the importance the praise the merits as he calls it the merits of the group or the friends all right so we should be speaking about how great the society is the group is finally its praise should be disclosed by all the friends that means we should be openly it's just a second here i've got a okay there we go we should be openly displaying openly displaying um, and praising the group okay then they should say in now with through this stage one of the assembly so we've passed this fir first phase of the assembly of friends and the next phase begins then each will state his mind or her mind about the actions we can take so that each and every one will be able to acquire the love of friends and then our second phase is to talk about talk about how to attain the love of friends okay what each person can do to acquire love in his heart for each and everyone in the society what can we do what to do and once this stage is completed suggestions regarding what can be done in favor of society begins and then stage three the concerns carrying out of the friends decisions about what should be done so our third phase when we're together is just like um, the 
concern carrying out of the friend's decisions about what should be done. So we decided on what to do. Now we're going to talk about the difficulties of doing it so we can overcome them. What's stopping us from doing it? Difficulties or states to overcome in order to achieve what we said we would do. From this article we need to take a few things. Okay. The first thing here is about praising the society. This will come later, right? We can't just obviously sit behind the screen and you guys can't just hear to, to an article or hear me speaking and all of a sudden feel that the friends are great or the society is great. You just can't. It's just not going to happen. So Rabash is saying, but listen, he's telling us things we need to do that are in front of us. And the reason he's writing about the future is, is a very smart thing to do because if he tells us what we start, what we need to start to do when we come together, then in his future articles, we'll read about what we're going to go through once we've done these things. Just like a father or a mother would teach kids, right? They talk about and they say, listen, if you do this, then this will happen. How do they know? Because of experience. So the Kabbalists are saying, listen, if you want to work with the guys, you need to praise them. But what does that really mean? It means you need to make them important. Why do I need to make them important? Well, simply because there's a little trick which I talked about before, which is called practicing spirituality. You see, if I want to get somewhere from A to B, I need to know what's stopping me. And the only thing I can discover that is by taking the advice of someone who's already done it. If I don't feel or see the Creator, but I understand because I have a dot in the heart that there has to be a purpose to life, and if I have decided to take on the method of the wisdom of Kabbalah, then I need to take the Kabbalist advice. So they're saying, listen, dude, if you want to come to bestow and live and exist just like the Creator, you're going to have to take on this attribute, bestow, and you're going to have to change your from self-love into the love of others. Well, how are you going to do that? Or you can only do that if there's somebody to do it with. Right. And I can only do it with other people if I feel they're important. Because in life, I'm always going to prioritize what I'm doing according to how important something is. Right? Does this make sense? It's all 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So it's not in a really, you know, rocket science. It's just step by step. So in the article, this is why we did the introduction in the first place, right? So we talked about all these things before, because now I need to, now, now I can start to look at what I need to, how I need to approach the friends. Because if they're the key to attaining spirituality, then I need to praise them. Praising We'll get into that in detail later on. But when we're together, we need to understand that friends are these dots in the heart, okay, which are in common to the dot in the heart I have. And we have to make this common work together. That's why they're important. And I'm praising the friends because they have the same inclination as I have. We are like-minded people who want to attain the same goal. It's like a football team, right? I can't win on my own. Like I'm just not going to win the cup. I'm not, I can't win the World Cup on my, on my own. But we're 11 guys and if we work together really well and if we're really harmonious and if we're better, we can win that cup. And same thing here. 
So everybody in a football team, if they work closely together in harmony, they're really connected, they'll be a really good team. Well, same here, all these things that we need to do in the group are also harmonious and in sync. Now, the reason football teams can be successful is because they see what they're going to get. We have a bit of a problem. We don't see what we're going to get. And it's very hard to work for something when you don't know what the reward is. Am I correct? All right, because you've got no motivation. Everybody's because our nature says, "What am I going to get?" Okay. So spiritual work means that I have to make something that I want to attain, which I don't know what it is important for me and the only thing I've got is a dot in the heart which is like a gut feeling really it's just a gut feeling and a guide who teaches me from books from I don't know when right, Zohar from 2000 years ago and a group of friends who are in this business with me and those are the only things I got it's, got, it's like Mac MacGyver you guys know MacGyver I love MacGyver. Anybody know MacGyver? You know, the, the, the guy who can make, I don't know, like an atom bomb with a needle and string. He's that guy. He's genius. Okay? So we've got a few things in our hands and we have to build out of that spirituality. The reason we're limited with, with the tools is because otherwise we won't be able to we, if we're not li if we have a lot of tools we won't need others if we don't need others we can't feel anything because all the connection that's felt is between people right anybody try to fall in love with themselves it doesn't really work right so i need someone okay and falling in love is the sensation Right, which is between two people. All right, so let's do this. Okay, you'll have to excuse my drawing. Let's just think they're wonderful people, all right? <laughs> it's not about looks, okay? Now, love is felt not in her and not in him. It's felt between them in the connection they have. So when we want to attain the spiritual format, where are we going to attain it? Well, it's going to happen only in between, in the feeling, in that sensation that's, that's flowing in between us. And that sensation flowing in between us is actually going to be who? The Creator. This is why we need the friends. This is why they need to be important. All right, so this is why we need to praise them, as he says. We, praising means I need to see them critical. It needs to be very important for me to understand that without these guys, I can't make this happen. Without the rest of the team, I can't win this game. Okay, are we all good with that? Does that make sense? Yeah, everything we feel in life is never inside us, even though it's described as we're feeling it inside of us. But everything we get from people in terms of connection is always in between the people. What I feel afterwards is a conclusion of this connection that we have. It's not the actual feeling, but, but what I conclude and understand that feeling to be. Because if I have, for example, a friend and he's generous or she's generous, that generosity is in the connection between us, okay? But from that connection, I understood that, okay, she's generous. This is why there are 8 billion people 
and all the possibilities, the permutations and the combinations of connection is infinite. This is why reality is so rich. That's why the whole trick is among people. Okay. Any questions there, Anthony? Oh, yes. So this is why we need our root, mutual responsibility. And this is why I need to see the friends great. Because if I don't see them great, I don't want to hang out with them. When I want to hang out with people I don't see great, I just like think like, well, that's a waste of time. This is why we need to check all the time when we're leaving the lesson. What did I leave this lesson with? Everybody got a notebook? I must have finished like a dozen notebooks in Kabbalah. I'm taking notes, this and that. And if you see my wall upstairs where I work, there are notes all over the wall. I could always have to put the puzzle together. And this is how it all works. I take little advices from here and there and you got to bring it all together. It's like making a cake. Go on then. We'll ask a few things. Alrighty, so most recent question from Michael. What is the difference between friends in the Kabbalah group and friends in my day-to-day -day existence? Because you're not in the same mindset. If you try now to, to bestow to people um, and you're not in the same, same uh, understanding, you, you don't have the same goal, they'll think you're weird. Because you, 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 you know, you're trying to come to them with love and bestowal and all that. They think there's something weird about that guy. It's just not right. Okay. Because they don't know what you're trying to get. The whole idea is that's why we treat, we don't, it's not like we treat the other people outside badly or anything. Okay. We still treat them like, you know, nice and so on. We're, we're all good citizens. Okay. Nice, polite. Where's Michael from? Michael, it doesn't say where he's from here. Okay. He's brought in through Zoom. All right, so you know you South Africa, South Africa. Okay, so you treat them like you you treat a nice, you know, like a nice regular person. But the 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 treatment we're talking about amongst us need to take it one notch up. We need to take it one step higher. So don't do spiritual work with the people on the outside because you're not in the same uh, framework. Your, your goal is different and their goals are different. Yes. Now, uh, Shmuel is asking, why do I need to win anything? I need to be convinced or convince myself about the Creator in the first place. Conviction comes later. What we need to do, like kids growing up, when we grow up, we don't have a, we don't have a problem listening to what mom and dad say. Because by nature, children can take advice from their parents and they'll feel that their parents are right and they will nullify themselves to their parents and, and they'll do what their parents say. Because we're all in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, we all have egos right up here. So nobody really wants to listen to the guide because everyone says, oh, I know better. Right? So the Kabbalists are saying, listen, if you want to attain what we've attained, yeah, this is the advice. We can just give you the advice because we understand you've got an ego which is like that big, right? But if you want to advance, you have to nullify yourself to grow in this wisdom. So conviction can only come later as I apply the method from the books. I take their advice and then I understand that what they wrote about was true because I lived and went through what they wrote about. And how did they write it? Because they went through the same stuff. And then I have conviction. Now, uh, Yehudith, is asking, Yehudith is asking, if I perceive the reality in my box, what is the difference here? We'll always perceive reality in our box, so what difference I don't understand. So, yeah, if, if I perceive the reality in my box, what is the difference here? I, th I don't understand that question, maybe. If into you'll brief. write in and give us a little bit more explanation on that question, we'll re-ask it. We have Steve here who says, How does love and connection between the Kabbalah friends with points in the heart 
differ from the pleasure of corporeal love and friendship? Uh, with, like I said, we have differences in goals. Okay, so I've got friends who don't study Kabbalah either, right? So when I'm amongst them, we d I don't talk spiritual stuff. I d I'm not directed towards spirituality. Well, we go, we have a laugh here and there, we have a drink here and there, and we're, you know, joking around and stuff, and okay, and that's that, okay? It doesn't go beyond that. So we're just good mates because we have a good time, you know, at going out. But with Kabbalah, what does Rabbi Ash tell us here? He says, listen, when we're with each other, we need to talk about how to attain the love of friends. We need to talk about what to do. So I'm, when I'm hanging out with the guys out there, if I tell them now, listen guys, we need to learn and and figure out how we're going to love each other, they'll just say, what are you talking about, dude? they just laugh at me and they'd be right. I mean, imagine going down to the pub with your mates and telling them, guys, the beers are on me. Tonight we're going to talk about how to love each other. It's like they'll freak out. Okay, I'd freak out. <laughs> One of them came up to me and said that I'd freak out as well. Okay, because it's just not like it's just not it's just not happening. Okay, so we need to figure out that with the guys outside, we need to behave like how they're behaving, and with the guys in the group, we need to behave towards the goal of the group. Right? Okay, so uh, from you, to, we we have some clarification. It says you said we feel love between us. Um, it was not clear. We, uh, the we, story about love between people. Okay, listen, guys. We can only feel things if there's if there's a mutual connection between us. If we connect, if we try to connect. If there's somebody living in China and I'm living here, we've got no connection. We've got nothing happening. Okay. Let's say there's no internet. There's nothing. That person's over there. I'm over here. So I don't have any feelings or emotions because we just have nothing to talk about. We, we're just not there. We're not connected. However, though, if I go out tonight and meet a friend of mine, I'm going out with my spouse or partner, husband or wife, doesn't matter. When we connect, then we can talk about emotions and feelings and thoughts coming out, right? Yes, you're with me. You all agree? Yeah? Those things are happening between us because we have a mutual thing happening. That's why they're coming out. If I was on my own, the thoughts and the feelings that would be coming out in me are coming out from within me. It's not coming out from the mutual connection. I don't know if I, if, I don't know, is it clear, not clear? Am I making sense? Does that make sense? Okay, because if I'm on my own, everything is coming out from within. Because it's already in me, the th my thoughts, my desires. Okay, but if I'm with another person, because we're connecting, what's coming out is the conclusion of that connection between us. Even though I'm feeling it in me, but I'm feeling it because of that connection. That's why it's between us. I will always feel things inside my vessel, that's for sure. But what I'm going to be feeling is because going to be the outcome of that connection we have, and that's between us. Right? She says, now it's clear, thank you. Great. Great. Oh, wow, we've got a good one here. Mm. Abdul says, I have a girlfriend who is not a Kabbalist, nor going to be. How do I relate with her? You treat her very nicely, like you should treat her like a nice gentleman. Who's that? Is that Abdul? Abdul, yes. Abdul, are you on the screen? Where's your camera? Give, give us a wave so we know who you are. All right, so that might happen. Yes. <coughs> Next question is, uh, this one here is from Michael. Michael says, why is it important that everything stays in the assembly, as Rabash calls it? We've spoken about this before, and I get the feeling it is a really bad idea that what we talk about and learn about in the group for it to leave the group. It's a bad idea for it to leave the group. It's like rule number one of Fight Club. <laughs> you do not talk about Fight Club outside the Fight Club. But why is it so cru so critical? It's, it's just like what I just mentioned about me going out with the guys 
who are not into Kabbalah or spirituality at all, okay? Let's say I'm going out with a bunch of accountants, right? Let's say they're, they're English accountants or Australian accountants, right? We're going out down the pub. What do we do in lunch break or in after work? We go down the pub, have a beer, right? So I can't talk to those guys now about, you know, hey, let's get spiritual. Okay, it's just not going to, it's just out of tune. Um, this is why spirituality, it's like football players, right? When football players talk about football among themselves. But with people who are not playing football, let's say they're inside a group of scientists. I mean, those scientists are not going to want to talk football. They're going to look at the football player and go, he runs good, but he's just like, he's just, you know, not there. <laughs> You know what I mean? So what are those group of scientists going to talk with a football player? There's just nothing in common. So what we need to do is talk about common things. But thank goodness we're not in the fight club. You can call our group the love club. <laughs> now imagine talking about the love club with your mates. It's just not going to happen. It's just like raw. I mean, it's just... Whew. I mean, how was that love club last night, man? Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, from Shmuel... <laughs> Smuel is asking, how do I know what is spiritual love and what is not? You say that an exercise in, in loving a number of random people is equivalent to love of God. We'll get there. That's a nice question. Okay. We're just talking about it right now. Okay. We're not doing anything. We're behind the screens. We're just learning about a few concepts right now. This is why before I touched on the topic of love, I touched on the topic of mutual responsibility, our vote, and our vote, there you go, so mutual responsibility, and this, the reason I touched on that before love, because I didn't want to freak you guys out, okay, it was love, okay, because it's, like it's like a funny topic for people who want to get spiritual, but really this is what we need to define when we're talking about love and bestow, we need to be clear that it's not anything like like a Snow White or a Sleeping Beauty kind of fairy tale. This is a, this is a trait that allows me to exit exit my limited existence and limited perception of reality because our existence is limited inside this small vessel this small vessel of reception right we're just living in our own own bubble we're living in a little balloon so this thing that Kabbalists call love and bestowal right allows me to step out of this zone because at the end of the day this desire to receive is my body I'm limited in this body. I'm stuck in it. It's got a limited expiry date. And I don't know when that is. Even more scary. Because I don't know when that is. It, we're stuck in it. We're living in it. We're suffering in it. And we want to know why. So they're saying, well, look, you can get out of this. With this dot in the heart. The way to get out of it is to disconnect your dot in the heart from this desire to like consume everything for yourself and that's how you can be free from it the way to attain that is love and bestowal so look at love and bestowal as a tool as a leverage as as a trait that allows me to get out of my self-love does that make sense? Because we're in self-love. The way to get out of it can be the love of others. It makes sense if you look at it in a logical way. And then this thing called love doesn't freak you out so much. Because you look at it in a pragmatic way. You're just looking at it from a psychological shift. Um, a way of just changing your mindset. Steve says, so... We all connect outside ourselves and bring the same connection back to ourselves? Yes, but then that new self is going to be a spiritual self rather than receiving for yourself to stuff yourself up 
which is very limited, then you get this attribute of bestowing, which is endless. It's like getting pleasure from loving someone you really love. I mean, if, if you guys got someone you guys really love, right, then doing nice things for them becomes joy. It becomes happiness. Michael says, if the love, cro if the love club grows, it may become a better world, wouldn't it? Yes. If Imagine all of us being in that love club. I mean, we wouldn't have any dramas at all. And Claire asked earlier, I find it really hard to focus on people's positive qualities. How do I overcome that? In time you will, because we're all like that. The first thing we see about others is just, oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's awful, that is. Oh. What was God thinking? Right, we're all like that. Relax, no problem, okay? It's good that you even see you're like that. Because that's already self-recognition. That's already plus one. So it's already good. Because now, because to see that there's something negative in you is already a blessing. Because you know what to fix. If, it, if you didn't see it, then you don't know what to fix. That's a bigger problem. So we're all like that, don't worry. But over time, you begin to see how, how amazing everybody is. And everybody else will see how amazing you are. And it, this is this is really amazing about the wisdom of Kabbalah. It's just how how you begin to all of a sudden change, and you begin to see f see people in such a way that you never thought you'd see them. You think, oh my God, these people are just—they're not great. They're like amazing, one in a billion. And it's you know even that is a little freaky. It freaks you out a little bit. But it's just an amazing experience because normally we never think about people like that. Uh, Felix, please write in, elaborate on your question because it's not quite clear. Steve is asking, is the, he asked earlier, is the middle line, like Christians say, 100% man and 100% God, a true paradox? No, no, it's like it's not a paradox at all. It's like how the Kabbalists say. Um, a 100% independent person who has a desire to receive in order to bestow. How's that? And Shmuel asks, uh, we already have a number of Arvut to family, friends, religion. How is our, how this Arvut is different and why I need it if I have other Arvuts? Because, because of your goal. You must measure everything in Kabbalah according to your goal and the purpose of life is to be like the Creator and to bestow to the Creator like He bestows to me. With family responsibility, well I'm taking care of their corporeal stuff. Like our friend Abdul said, listen I've got a girlfriend she's just not in Kabbalah and she just she's not gonna be. Okay, so what's Abdul gonna do? He's going to be on his own forever, stuck in this world with a dot in the heart. So what is he going to do? He's going to do Arvut with us. And we're going to give him mutual responsibility. He's going to give us mutual responsibility. Why? Because the purpose of life is, okay, to be responsible for the family is great, and you should be, but it's not the meaning of life. Sorry to say. The meaning of life is to attain the Creator exactly how he is and Steve said could could you speak about the middle line again could you say that uh, that again about the middle line the middle line is a desire to receive with an intention to bestow just like the Creator that desire to receive doesn't lose his egoistic format I'm still an egoist I'm gonna end the lesson in a minute in 10 seconds actually so listen up, we're an egoistic desire to receive, this will never change. But on top of that I'm going to build love and bestow, which is called a screen. And then I'm going to receive, but I'm going to receive in order to bestow. Oops, crikey. There we go. 
all right we're going to love you leave you 10 minutes late as usual what can you do we only got 60 seconds to save the planet i mean 60 minutes to save the planet so we're running a bit over time see you guys on tuesday take care of yourself stay with love take care of take care of each other as well all the best and we'll see you next tuesday bye bye